today. From the Caesars Superdome in New Orleans. This is the NFL on EA Sports. see Derek Carr and the New Orleans Saints taking on Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns. The first open back in 1975. There's a look inside the iconic Caesars Superdome in downtown New Orleans. It's Blake Groupie to get this one started, and off we go here in New Orleans. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. Leading them out is their quarterback, the former 12th overall pick. Some refer to him as the natural, Deshaun Watson. And after two consecutive seasons where he played just 12 games combined, they're hoping that this is a year where Watson finally shows that he was worthy of that massive contract they received back in 2022. Not that long ago, we are talking about him as one of the top quarterbacks in the league. And if he gets back on track, this team can make some serious noise as the year unfolds. First play, Watson to the air. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A good start offensively. 15 yards on the game's initial play. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass-catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Watson now to throw. Right back to Njoku. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And it'll be second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Now an option play on second down. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. Third down at six. Watson. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. And as you're game planning as a staff, you go through all the different ways you can neutralize the other guys' pass rushers. Extra linemen, leave a tight end in, bring the running backs back in to block, 
Or you can do this, a little simple screen pass, and it works to perfection. So in Saints territory now, here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. So back-to-back -back big runs picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. Watson, off play action. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid game to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. To throw on second is Watson. And that is incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. Eighth play of this opening drive coming up. This is third down. Back to throw, Watson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Yeah, the Browns are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. Well, only their first drive, Charles, but they talked to us about needing to convert on third down, in particular not letting third and short opportunities slip through their fingers. Well, they were successful right there. It also tells you that they're successful on first and second down as well to get to third and manageable and make them able to pick up those first downs. Now here we are, first and goal. They've got to like what they're doing on this drive. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. To throw is Watson. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. You can't be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. They'll go again here from the 10-yard line on second and goal. Again, it's Watson. Fighting through pressure. Down at the two. Broke through first contact, but ultimately stopped shy of the goal line. He turned that into a nice gain. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. And that's an early scramble. It can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. Hines is in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Well, just about an ideal start to this one offensively because on the road, you want to make sure you quiet the home crowd early. And how do they do it? Nice march to start things off, let the run game find its footing early. That drive certainly checked a lot of boxes, and they finished it off with a touchdown run. Dustin Hopkins on now to add the extra point.
It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And the returner down to a knee, and this will come out to the 30-yard line. The Saints heading out for the first time, and there's Derek Carr at quarterback in his 11th NFL season now and second in black and gold. And Carr continues to produce good numbers on paper. He completed over 68% of his passes last season while also throwing 25 touchdowns to just eight interceptions. But as impressive as those numbers are, the numbers he's seeking, big numbers in the playoffs. And we expect him and his team to be back in the playoff mix when January rolls around. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. A play action fake. They'll look to throw. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett. What a play by him. That's going to go as a loss of 13. And they get to him right out of the gate. And this defense hoping that that's a harbinger of things to come. Yeah, when you give up a first play sack. Makes your quarterback wonder if he's going to go to the sidelines and talk with his offense coordinator and head coach and say, hey, you know that game plan we put together? We might need to change it right now. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Here's Carr to throw. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. It certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Carr. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. Here comes the Saints punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Shreds him with a stiff arm. We'll call that a 43-yard punt, two on the return. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And they'll be looking to make this a two-score advantage. Had the touchdown on their first drive, Charles. Hey, they can get up two scores here on the road. That's a heck of a start. And not only have they thought about it, I wonder if they visualized it. I remember playing, and they used to turn the lights out in our meeting room and run through a situation like this and say, just think about what it would be like to be up on the road and take the crowd out of it. Maybe they did some of that. And they'll start on the ground with Hines. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Here's Watson. He's going to drop this one down for Chubb. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. Well, as a coach, you absolutely love seeing your offense find their rhythm early, and that's exactly what we've seen so far. They had a touchdown on their opening drive, and now they connect here for another nice gain for a first down. This offense is moving the ball well, exactly as he drew it up in practice. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. 
The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. First carry now for Nick Chubb. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Now a second and ten. Now it's Hines. And yeah, good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills? And it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice gain. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now Watson. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they're in a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try a mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Second and 10. Now it's Watson. He'll find Hines out of the backfield. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it an eyelash. Dropped it to one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. It's all pretty simple sometimes, isn't it? Go where the defenders are not, and he does exactly that. Makes a nice catch to move the chains. Defense, got to find a better way of accounting for the shorter routes that are being run against them. Here's Watson. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Deshaun Watson punching it in from a yard away. And the Browns have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Another impressive drive, so they're two for two. Two touchdowns, Charles, a great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. On is Hopkins now for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. So that drive goes eight plays. And the final act belonged to Deshaun Watson in his touchdown run. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. 
And he'll wisely just take a knee here, and this ball will come out to the 30-yard line. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked off by Grant Delpit. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw or maybe the ball's tipped or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. At issue here, does the football make contact with the ground before he secured it? And I think some of these angles are going to give us a pretty good look. Secured is the important part because the ball can touch the ground, but it can't be loose when it does. So that's what they're going to have to try and figure out. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. After the interception, here's Watson. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And this one is incomplete. And that's where you're counting on a receiver size being an advantage. They were hoping he could go up the top of a smaller DB and haul that one in. A good thought, but that time it didn't work out. Here's second and 10. <laughs> Throwing again, Watson. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Hines. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back and it could turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. From the gun on third, Watson. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. I thought that was a completed pass until he came in and forced the ball from his hands. Not only did he make a nice play, he brings up fourth down. Here's Dustin Hopkins now to try the field goal. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this will remain a two-touchdown game. The New Orleans offense set to take over. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back, but make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and 10. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and eight. And that'll be incomplete. 
Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. Already up two touchdowns. How about that drive killer of a sack there to add to their good play? This offense coming away with no points now when some kind of score was desperately needed. Here comes the Saints punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Here comes the Browns' offense back onto the field. It's been a good first half so far. They're up 14 to nothing. Points here, they could really put them in command before intermission. Yeah, and it's all well and good what they're seeing and how they're feeling right now. But it's the NFL. How many times have we watched 14 to nothing leads evaporate and quickly? Mm. So how, do we, how have we seen them combat it? Continue to run your offense, but don't back off at all. Don't start looking at the clock. Don't start thinking about, hey, just take care of the football. Keep attacking. Usually the best way to maintain control. He'll get a yard, that's all, as they get him down at the 28. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's a second and nine. Operating from the gun, Watson. He finds his man, complete. It's four. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Out of the gun, Watson. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Fourth down, Corey Bajorquez gets set to punt for Cleveland. They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Throwing on first down is Carr. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Kamara. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. Now Carr. 
Alvin Kamara reeling it in on back-to-back -back plays. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 17 there in a New Orleans first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. now on first down over the middle and complete to Shahid and this will leave him a yard short nice pickup of nine yards on first down second down and a little more than a yard here again they'll throw with Carr There's Chris Olave. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 16. 23 yards to pick up there. Another nice play there. They've gotten down into the red zone in no time at all. That's what this offense can do when they get on a roll. And now they're set up with a first and 10. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. To throw his car. And he'll get this one underneath to Kamara. Oh, he's brought down. And remember here, no timeouts left. They got to get to the line quick. A good pickup, but it will come on what should be the final play in this first half. So we come upon halftime, and it's the visiting Browns with the lead. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has certainly been one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference as the teams have already come back out onto the field for the second half. So let's get you back out as well to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. A two-touchdown game, 14-0 to score as we get rolling again here in this second half. Jackson now to return. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, it'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 23. The first carry now, this is Alvin Kamara. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Second down and eight. To throw its car. It gets this complete to Shahid. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 
Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. And that's the kind of play this offense needs to maybe kick them into gear a little bit. They've been stuck in neutral much of the game. Perhaps that can give them a little bit of confidence that big plays are out there. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 11 yards there, just like last play. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. First and ten, here's Carr. Rush coming, and he's taken down. The linebacker, Jordan Hicks, flying in there for the sack. Blitz came there from the inside, and there just wasn't much resistance. No, not at all. That means that defensively, they timed it up perfectly and matched up perfectly. They drew all the blockers to the other guys, left a free runner back to the quarterback, and you know what a free runner turns into? What? A free hitter. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. Card out of throw. That'll be taken in by Shahid. Two yards on the pickup there. And that'll make it third and 13. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. To the right side and intercepted. Picked off by Grant Delpit. And the Browns are going to take over a couple of yards shy of midfield. And that has to be a little bit discouraging because after all their halftime talk, adjustments, and points of emphasis, their first drive ends with an interception. Absolutely aggravating if you're a head coach because you spent all that time, gone through every situation possible, and it still ends in a turnover. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. They start near midfield following the interception as they begin first and ten. Watson and the Browns now with a first and ten. Just shy of midfield at the 48. They begin the drive with Hines. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Hey, it's not the most spectacular play, but I think most teams will take that every single time for the first play of a drive. Begin the series with positive yardage and set yourself up for a very manageable second down. From the 46, here's second and four. Now it's Watson, a bootleg. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. He'll wind up losing a full nine yards here on the sack. Now it's third down. This defense coming out after the half, and if that plays any indicator, Charles, maybe a little refreshed and refocused here for quarters three and four. Yeah, they did really well on that one. That's exactly what they need to keep doing if they want to change their fortunes in this game. Gonna need something special here on third and long. After that sack, what does Watson have in his arsenal? Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Oh, he'll air this one deep for Judy. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up, converged on his man, and broke the play up. The Browns send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. 
And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. Now it's the veteran Jamal Williams, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room. If you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Here's a second and eight. Now Carr. Alave over the middle. Calling a gain of six on the play. And now one yard to go on third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Play action. Now it's Carr. And he is caught. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. So much for the run on third and one. Instead, it's a big chunk in the pass game. First down. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking of throwing to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time, they let him roam down the field. And a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Carr going to throw. Working the middle here, that's complete to Moreau, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Another first down as he went right back to the same well, this time for 17 yards. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Car to throw again. Open man left side. Shahid has it. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Greg Newsom. And the Browns are going to have it here at their own 32-yard line. And right about now, you start to think, and maybe they're starting to think, gosh, maybe points aren't going to happen for us in this game. Well, it's a thought that is worth having because so far in this game, this defense has not just had the upper hand. They've appeared to be a step ahead, maybe even two steps, to everything they've done. They've had an answer for everything this offense has thrown at them. The Cleveland offense ready to go. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they?
Watson on first down. Into the hands of Cedric Tillman. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. A shotgun snap for Watson. And his throw is incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing again is Watson. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Remember, Brandon, he ran for a touchdown earlier, so his decision to go ahead and tuck it and go again turned out to be a wise one. And the decision is what is important here. He has made some good decisions on when to tuck it and go. First and ten, Watson, open man, he completes it to Judy. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Just need a yard here, second and one. Here's Hines. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 50 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Well, you know me, partner. I never tell them to back off of being aggressive. But sometimes you see the consequences when you're overly aggressive and you don't secure tackles. Guys break through. Trying to sell out to pry that football loose. And just as you said, cost some yardage. Yeah, you got to go get him. Stand him up first before you go for the ball. Don't just go for it initially. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Watson now to throw. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Watson. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Deshaun Watson with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Browns have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, I've heard you use the term put away drive and that right there seemed like the definition of a put away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs. And if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, Fantastic. Now it's Hopkins to add the extra point. And it is now 21 to nothing. So that drive in total eight plays. And the final act belonged to Deshaun Watson in his touchdown run.
The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped it to 23-yard line. The Saints coming out now to take the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. You got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 23. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. They'll set up the screen now to Kamara. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. A good convergence there defensively. Only a yard, and it's second down. Nice job by the defense figuring that play out and holding it to a short game. But I don't think the offense is going to be daunted. They actually accomplished their goal there. Now they've got them aware that they can throw a screen at them. Maybe it'll slow the pass rush down a little bit, and they can throw it downfield. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. The offense on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and nine. Now Carr. Pitch and catch to Moreau, the tight end. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. It'll go down as a gain of six. And that's going to make it fourth down. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They run. It's Kamara. Nifty move. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Saints football as we get you reset. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Shotgun now for Carr. They'll get this out to Kamara. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They tackle them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Car to throw on second down. Throwing out right here, caught by Alave. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Now they got to get to the line quickly. On first down, Carr. That's complete to his running back, Kamara. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Here's Carr to throw. Back to Kamara for another catch. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. 
Throwing now is Carr. On the check down, he finds Kamara. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Here now, second and four. Here's Carr. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go in the football game. down. I throw, but he makes the catch. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Again, it's Carr. Yeah, he's got it. Touchdown, Saints. From four yards out. And the Saints are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know, it doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> And the point after, good by Groupie. And they'll cut the lead to 21-7. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Down to an egos Watson, and that should just about do it for this ball game. Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And we talked so much about the turnover battle determining who wins and who loses. This game, no exception. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and they go on to victory. They look like a smooth operation in this one, didn't they? Because you look at every facet of the game, they handled their business. Offense took care of the football, converted it into points. Defense took the ball away, gave it back to the offense. Special teams right there with them. That's the type of game a coach is going to really love and value. And when they show the film, they have to be careful not to give out too many kudos and kill their motivation going forward. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. Till next time, we say so long from the Bayou.